Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Catherine and I'm trying to release videos weekly. This is my attempt at that. Today's video is going to be a college tips video. The original purpose of my channel was going to be college videos, but then I started my channel right at the end of like my spring semester so there was not much college content to film but now it's back to school season this video is gonna be all about tips and i don't know if i'm gonna involve like all this like packing essential stuff in this video because that is such a long like list of things I'm not doing a dorm haul because i'm not buying any new things for this year i've just been reusing everything because if you buy smart you don't have to buy again today we're going to talk mostly about the academics the social life and just getting started on campus as a freshman or in general like maybe you're a sophomore and you're still not feeling Feeling like you're in the groove with things or you just feel a little lost at college whatever it may be you can just click on this video share it with a friend and be like guys this is the best advice I've ever gotten in my entire life listen to it I have a list of things on my phone it's a pretty long list of things that I think college freshmen would like to know things I would have liked to know if you don't know I'm currently or I'm gonna be a junior at Cornell University this fall which is literally in three weeks where did summer go i don't really know but it's gonna be three weeks from now and be a junior which is crazy so i have two years of the college experience under my belt one of them was through covid but while i may not have the one most 100 percent college experience i think i have enough to bestow my knowledge upon you guys all right let's get started with the actual advice and college tips buckle up get a snack tune in get a notepad your ipad just Remember the stuff I'm gonna tell you in this video. I promise you, it'll make your life so much easier. I'm gonna say something specifically about my school and then just in general about college. So obviously, all I know is my experience through Cornell University. A lot of what I say is gonna be based off of my personal experience, obviously. The first question I think that a lot of people have is like, how hard is college really? And not just college, but also Cornell University. I do go to an Ivy League school and those are known to be like the most prestigious and hardest schools, especially Cornell University. We had like this reputation of it being so hard that students kind of struggle in a lot of ways. But I would say that how difficult it is really depends on your major, your work ethics, and just how well you're able to balance life. Like I did have a pretty hard time first semester just in general with everything. I wasn't really sure if I liked my major, I wasn't sure if I was at the right school, I was worried I didn't have enough friends, I didn't have good friends, I didn't know what was going on. That transition period from high school to college is pretty difficult because you're changing as a person and your goals are going to be different than in high school. Like in high school you're taking a class, you're going eight hours, you're in you're out that's about it but like at college especially if you're dorming you are like in it for the long haul um and that's what it felt like for me i felt like i was never ever gonna get out of there and i was like oh my god this is gonna be the worst like four years of my life i'm halfway through and i feel so much better about it than i did my first year and it just all really takes time for you to figure out how how to work things out for yourself if you are feeling like it's getting really hard or you're scared about it getting hard i'm not gonna lie and say oh my gosh it's so easy like you're gonna have the best time of your life that is true for some people but also you can have like everyone has their struggles even people who are having fun all the time and are posting like everything is like so great maybe some things are not going the best for them and you're gonna have challenges like you will have in any point of life i'm sure all your high school teachers told you this like college is not the same and in a way they're right but also uh, some of it maybe not right you know and i think something that people struggle with especially like at, at an ivy league is imposter syndrome i know i had that for a really long time i was not the top of my class by any means i didn't think that i was doing anything special to even get accepted into the school so when i did it was really a shock i was like i don't know if i belong here the people who go to this school from my perspective, I was like, they're the smartest in their schools, they're all number one and two, they're all gonna be like super smart, goal-driven, and all, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I do have those characteristics in me, like I'm very goal-driven, I do like school, I love learning and things like that, but I wasn't like top of my class, like I said, and I, school wasn't my life, and I was so scared that going to a school like Cornell, that's what it was for everybody, like school is their life and they just academic like all the way, and that wasn't the case thankfully I'm like happy about that but I struggled a lot thinking I didn't belong especially first semester even harder during like the COVID semester but at the end of the day I just learned that everything is like fine because here I am it's my third year 
I'm doing great. I have lots of friends. I have had many internships, which I can talk about after in the video. It's just all what you make it, you know? After covering that broad question, another tip I would say is knowing when you're deciding your major, your minor, what you want to do in life. It is important to kind of know what area you're going into because in the long run it'll help you. Changing from humanities to STEM is really hard, I do know that. You're gonna be stressed out a little bit if you, you're doing that big of a switch. Picking a major that you know you're interested in, that you think can help you in the long run, that's really important because you also don't want to waste your time doing so much. But I will say first year you have a lot of space to take classes you want because especially at Cornell you have certain requirements you have to take throughout the years that don't have to do anything with your major and they fall in different categories like social sciences natural sciences random electives things like that where you can like kind of play around with your interests and see what you really do enjoy and I had some trouble with my major and stuff so I applied to Cornell University as a why do I keep saying the full name we get it I applied to Cornell a psychology major and I got in of course but then as I was taking the psychology courses it was feeling a little too theoretical for me and I really like learning things how they apply to the real world how I can apply them to life to my job things like that that's just how I learn or how I learn better and I was like this is not what I wanted this is not what I envisioned so I was like no thank you and I skedaddled out of that and I was like okay I'm gonna be a linguistics major and that again was so so theoretical I was not it, it wasn't even it wasn't bad because all the classes I were taking were pretty interesting but then there was the classes I needed for the major that were so, like I was like there's no way I can sit through that and just enjoy it and be like content with what I'm doing well so I was like okay I'll keep it as a minor because I've already taken so many classes for it but that's when I decided that I was going to transfer not out of Cornell but into another school at Cornell so originally I was in arts and sciences which is the school that houses the psychology and linguistics major and I decided I was going to apply to the College of Human Ecology through an internal transfer and I'm now a human development major which is so much more of an applied study and I'm in love with it. Human Ecology is all about that like making sure that the studies are connected to the world and that everything that you're doing is for a purpose. Not to say that all the other majors aren't like I've taken classes on how to help kids with mental disorders in schools, just overall development like the different stages of life and how there are different problems that occur during those things and how to manage them. I'm I'm taking a class next semester about like multilingualism, multilingualism, multilingualism and multiculturalism in early childhood and that is literally what I plan on doing with my career. I want to be a speech pathologist so like learning about language and early childhood is something that like I really wanted to do and that I wasn't getting that in the other classes like in linguistics and psychology. I was learning basics like I wanted to learn about being in the field. I wanted to learn about actual case studies and things like that that I wasn't really getting in the majors that I was in, that's that. I don't know what else to say. I feel like I'm gonna miss a lot of things in this video because there's gonna be a lot you know, that people wanna know. So if you wanna know more, please put it in the comments. I'll make a part two, I really don't mind. But okay, next thing I'm gonna talk about, we're staying in the academic group, um, academic slash career group, and I'm gonna talk about studying. I really need to take my own advice, and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it just depends on the class. You really need to know what the best method of study is for you for each class. The way I study for my a biology class is not the same way I'm studying for my infancy and childhood class. Like that's just not, it's not gonna work. I used to just study the same way every single time, like I would just read through my notes and that was not helping. So sometimes it would be I'd have to rewrite my notes, structure them, make different study guides. That helps me a lot in my STEM class classes as if I would rewrite my notes make a little compact study guide that always helped me the most and if it's a class where it's a lot of terms and memorizations like in my infancy and childhood class I would make quizlets or flashcards I like quizlets because it's easier I can do it on my computer I can do it on my phone I can do it while I'm on the bus I don't have to take out cards and stuff I love quizlet I've been literally been using it since middle school when I was taking my regions and I'm absolutely obsessed with it but yeah studying is very important and finding places to study honestly sometimes I can do work in my room I can do work in my room let me make that clear I can do my homework in my room I cannot study in my room there's no way I could ever study in my room I'm just like not focused enough like I can do a little assignment in my room I'll FaceTime like a friend or something from like back home we'll do work together that way we're like together and like doing work in our rooms because sometimes I don't feel like going to the library especially because at Cornell everything is like so 
far. I mean, it's not that far. Like, I could walk, but, like, I don't want to be walking home late, et cetera, et cetera, sometimes. So I just do that. Or, like, my friends are all busy, no study dates, so I'm in my room. Having, like, a designated place for you to do your work is very important. I would suggest finding, like, really good study spots on campus. I do have a couple here for Cornell University students. I'm sharing my favorites with you in hopes that they do not become crowded and crazy because these are my favorites. I cherish them. I need them, okay? My top study places are lounges, also by category, like, for different types of work. So I'll start with the kind of casual study, like, if you don't like doing work in your room and you just want a casual, like, workplace. I would say going to the physical sciences building. It's like this huge glass building right on central campus. It is my favorite place to do work, just random work. Like if I have to watch a little like 30 minute video, if I have to rewatch a lecture, something like that, I always go in there because it's very calm in there. Lots of people go in there to do work. I like it. It's like very minimal. There are outlets like along the walls and stuff. So it's functional and I like it. You can also stay there really late. I know some people it's like a Cornell bucket list to like sleep in PSB or like pull an all nighter. I'm not doing that. I care too much about my sleep. But it's like very casual, big open windows, lots of light during the day. You can see the pretty sunset. I've taken so many pictures of the sunset while I'm in there. If you want a more like, how do I say this? If you want a very like, I'm in here and I'm gonna study and I'm going to write my 1600 page paper, I would suggest the cocktail lounge, which is also open late night. It's always full though, so like I never really go in there. Um, it's super, super quiet. Super quiet. Like super quiet. It's not even a library, it's literally a lounge that just has a bunch of desks and stuff, so it's just so funny. But in that building, there is another library which we like to call the Harry Potter Library. Insert pictures so you know why. Yeah, so that's why we call it the Harry Potter Library. It's also very quiet. Personally, it's not my favorite, I will say that. I just put it on this list because I know other people like it and apparently it's like a good place to study. I don't like it because there's too many books in there and it's like the vibe in there is just, I feel so claustrophobic in there, I don't know, I don't know why. It's really pretty, I would say go at least once even if it's not your vibe, just feel it out, you know? My all time favorite is Man Library, it's on the Cal slash Humec quad. It's a huge library, I think it has like four floors and it's so, so nice in there. It's the perfect amount of like quiet and noise. Oh, everyone's obviously there studying some people are literally napping some dorm rooms do have their own lounges i'm not sure like where they're all located but i know some have some of them are good for studying some of them are like just more chill spots but any space is a space you know so if you don't feel like walking to a library your dorm probably has a room in which you can do your work if it's not your bedroom oh yeah the next thing i'll talk about is internship i have been lucky enough that i've been able to find internship through cornell university and i've had two internships through them my freshman year and this year like, i'm currently doing one also take advantage of different resource centers personally i work at one on campus so if you're a freshman what is it called let me google it for freshmen there's the tacton tatcon the TACCON Center for first year students. I personally have never used it. Don't know why I never used it. I just never did. I guess because my year was online. So like it was just a mess. So I never really used it. Also, I am a part of like this program with Wadi um, called the Pre-Professional Program. And Wadi is amazing. Um, they work with underrepresented backgrounds and minorities to help them achieve like their goals academically and professionally, especially in the Pre-Professional Program. I'm part of that. You get a mentor you're signed up with. Also a faculty advisor, like the Knight Writing Institute that helps you with like writing papers if you need help with resumes stuff like that the Einhorn Center is another center and that's a lot for like if you want to get involved with community engagement clubs on campus that kind of help like QDAP the Cornell University Deaf Awareness Project all of that is like in the Einhorn Center and different community projects will be advertised for like volunteers almost like always I'm kind of gonna wrap up the academic section because I think I've been talking for literally 30 minutes about that and I'm not sure what else and I'm not sure what else to talk about um, I feel like I covered most of it so now we're gonna talk about what everybody cares about social life on campus this is something I definitely did struggle with I don't party and stuff that's like kind of a big way that people are like that's my social life and I'm not that person at all so I found it a little bit difficult because even from freshman year I didn't expect so many people to like go out all the time and like go to parties and do certain things I just was kind of shocked by it because I didn't 
grow up with that like my friends and I from high school we weren't party people it was really weird for me I kind of got used to it I was like okay like I'm in college like everyone's gonna do it for me personally I was just always like damn like why is everybody doing this and I'm just in my room I did feel a little bad but like I never felt bad because I was like missing out on something I just felt bad that everybody was doing stuff without me so yeah that was like really hard for me but at the end of the day you'll find your friends if you need it so like if that's your scene great congratulations you'll have a blast and you'll have a blast even if you're like me and you don't party because I found friends that I can just do random stuff with like paint dates we made like random jewelry together we'll go on lunch dates dinner dates study dates things like that I'm more than okay with that we'll have movie nights and stuff like that yeah, let me rewind let's talk about having friends to begin with because you can't make plans if you don't have friends sorry that's just honest honest truth so I had a little bit of trouble making friends and kind of not I will say that because it was COVID so at first my friends were my at the time roommate and one friend I had from high school and then just friends that they both had that I just kind of became friends with because it was so hard we didn't have all those like orientation week events they were all on zoom it was hard to really find people unless you were like actively seeking them out which kind of sucked like a lot of people had their groups established prior to even getting to Cornell because there was a lot of group chats and people would ha hop on zooms and I kind of just had my roommate and mutual friends um, and also my sweet mates. You will find friends. I will say though, some friends don't stick around, some friends do. And that's just the way life is. Like, I've lost friends from high school, I've lost friends that I've had since middle school. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't, but that's just the way the world is. You're gonna have your friend group. I will say, take advantage of social media. I feel like we don't do this enough with friends. Like, I feel like you always hear people like, yeah, I met my boyfriend through Instagram DMs, I met my partner through some sort of social media app. I know we've heard of internet best friends that they all start to like fandoms and stuff like that and then you'll meet like in six years after you've met online but using the internet to find friends in your area chef's kiss wanna know why because i found my two best friends at college that way i still have a couple friends from freshman year like bella she lives in my like she lives where i live we're from the same like county i met her prior to cornell so i will say like take advantage of like finding people before like when you're first admitted join the group chats join all the like facebook groups i didn't join facebook groups because i didn't feel like making a facebook account just for that but if you have one go ahead i'm still friends with her and it's been literally we're going to our third year and i've made a couple of friends along the way through them and like just through classes and stuff like that one of my best friends alana she's also a youtuber shout out to alana go subscribe literally how i found her was from her youtube channel i was in my dorm room spring semester no friends no plans and i was just watching youtube videos and i saw cornell move-in vlog and i realized that she was moving in like it was like my year I literally full-on stalker mode found her instagram and i dm'd her i'll put a screenshot of the dm if i can find it and i was like hey i hope this isn't weird or something like that but i saw your youtube video and i think you're like vibes are good and i just asked her if we could hang out we talked a little bit and then we hung out i'm sure she probably thought i was psycho at first she was like why is this random girl texting me but guess what now we're best friends and she introduced me to our other best friend grace and we're just the three amigos now so use social media because i literally found the greatest people ever by just dming them on instagram also join clubs for your interests um, either professional or just like random hobbies you have i was in this magazine club and i met the loveliest ladies it just made me so happy it was just something i looked forward to all of our meetings i was so excited and then professional clubs you'll meet people in your field you can make connections that way i'm in an honor society for human development and psychology and we just can talk and share about our interests my friend alana and i are both in that I feel like I should talk about Greek life, or I feel like people want me to talk about Greek life, but I don't know anything really because I'm not in it. I don't really have an interest in being in it. I do have quite a few friends who are in it. I do have a couple of friends who are in Greek life. They all love it, and it's a great way to make friends. I feel like it is what you make of it. Personally, that wasn't what I was looking for. I don't know what else to say about Greek life because I'm not in it. There's something for everybody. Like I said, join a random club. I'll do what I, do whatever. Do whatever you want to do. The next thing we're going to talk about is campus life just in general, like living on campus, dorms, dining halls. I've lived on campus and I'm going to continue living on campus just because of the cost. It's a lot more affordable for me to live on campus than to live off campus. So that's just what I've been doing. And I have had roommates. Next year, I won't have a roommate because I just feel like that's the most suitable living situation for me. Both times I had a roommate, it wasn't a bad experience, thankfully. Like I didn't have any crazy roommates. I don't know. I don't have any like... Like crazy roommate stories to warn you guys about but i will say if you can choose a roommate like sometimes choosing a roommate goes well for you sometimes it doesn't um it's gone like both ways so, like random and the same goes for like not picking a roommate and ending up with one like i didn't pick my roommate last year but it was 
perfectly fine. Dormy is really not that bad. I'm moving in a single because I want to have my own space, especially because with my YouTube channel, I'm going to be filming a lot in my room. And it was kind of hard to do that when I had a roommate last year. I would like barely film in my room. Dorm life is really not that bad. I've never lived off campus. Can't give you any information on that. My friends are living off campus in a house. I will say plan in advance for living off campus because people do be struggling and they need to get the funds. They don't know where to get the funds from. They don't know what, where they're living. They ended up on the other side of town, like 20 minutes from school. It's just not really worth it. So make sure you have a plan and make sure you, like if you have a roommate, make sure everything's planned out between you guys because communication is key. My camera just stopped recording. I don't know why. I think it might have overheated. But another thing I will say is like packing stuff on campus. Make sure you're packing for the actual weather and like the place that you're going to, especially Ithaca. Make sure you're packing for like what you need because you don't really want to be buying a lot of stuff. But on the same thing of like packing, make sure you bring fancy clothes or like nicer clothing, both for presentations, interviews, events, and just going out. Like sometimes clothes will host events. My friend had like a fashion gala and I did not have any any fancy dress. It's like a theme and everything and I didn't have anything so I ended up borrowing hers so just make sure you have stuff and if you have an event and if you don't have stuff there is a cool organization on Cornell's campus called the wardrobe I'm pretty sure or just wardrobe they'll give you outfits and stuff for free for like professional things like if you have an interview coming up or an event and lastly I don't know the dining halls at Cornell are like hit or miss it really does depend. They have lots of options and stuff, so that's good. There's like so many dining halls on campus and cafes and stuff. I could do a whole separate video on certain some of these topics because it is like a lot. It is a lot to talk about, and I don't want to make this video so long. Um, the dining halls are like nice. Also, I would say like in your dorm room, like have snacks because sometimes I would just want something to grab and go for like if I had a class early and I didn't have time to get breakfast, I would have like a bar. Obviously, not everybody likes that, so like have like little snacks, prepackaged things that you can just grab and go because I feel like that's so simple and so easy and not a lot of people think about that but it's worth it i don't know if there's anything else we to talk about i thought i could have gone way more in depth about like social life and stuff but then this video would have been an hour long and i would much rather make part two with your guys' specific questions if you have any questions so leave them in the comments down below if you have any more questions about college life college in general literally anything i will make another video on it i'll be more specific tell me to go more in depth about something and i will i was going based off of my notes and i've reached the bottom so I think that's it for this video. Honestly, I had fun filming it. Probably because I was talking so much and I just love talking. Comment down below anything you want to see. I'm really trying to be more active on this channel and I'm finally getting in the swing of it. Especially because I have a new camera now, if you guys haven't noticed. The quality is insane and it's making editing so much easier. If you want to see more of me, my social medias are Captain 2 uu Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Thank you guys so much for coming back for another video. Thank you for joining me at this video. If you like this content and want to see more of it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it and I'll see you guys next Saturday. I'll see you guys next Saturday with another video Hello stranger, it's been a minute